Welcome to Spirit-Filled Catholic Ministries. I'm Mary Beth Winchell. Enjoy the video. People of God, and to be with you all today, always. It's so wonderful. And I just want to pray again with Mary Beth. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come, that you would rest on each one of us today, that we will be changed at this time, that you will minister to us as each one of us need even also to those people that are on our minds, our families, our friends, those around us that we pray for and bring to this meeting. Holy Spirit, come and do whatever you want to do today with us. In Jesus' name, I ask this. I just want to pray, I just want to say something. Um, I just want to make a proclamation. Um, In the name of Jesus, I just come against all your plans, Satan and you demons, for this meeting. I command you to get off these people, to not block anyone receiving this message. I command fear, I command intimidation to get off this meeting. Confusion, tiredness, irritation. I command you to leave now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. I've got something to, that's been on my mind to share and to talk about. My mouth's a bit dry today, so I'll be drinking quite a bit, I'm afraid. I wanna to talk today about the incredible, the amazing gift of speaking in tongues. And I know that for many people, this immediately causes a reaction and we can we can react with joy or we can react with like suspicion or fear or you know like I don't believe in that or or whatever but I want to talk about it in the time that I've got and try to give some testimony try to give some teaching that together we will look at 1 Corinthians 14 and we'll go through some verses together and then we'll do some practical where anybody who does not have the gift, we, you know, we, it is for you, it is for all of us, so we'll be praying for you if you want to receive the gift of speaking in tongues, that's something that is available for you today. If you've already asked for the gift, I believe you've received it, we're going to pray for an activation of that gift in your life, and for those of us, and this is usually the problem I find, <laughs> those of us who have the gift, I'm going to be sharing the stuff with you today. It's time to start using it and walking in it. It's no good having a car if it's just stuck outside the house and you never go in it. So we're going to be doing a lot of driving after today, as it were. That is my, my hope, and my wish, and what I'll be talking about. So first of all, I'm going to read some scriptures quickly. Um, and then later on, we're going to go through some pas a passage together from 1 Corinthians 14. There are many references to speaking in tongues in the Bible. Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. Jesus said, this is soon before he went back to heaven. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Yes. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will be by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amazing. Just as a, a note on that one, Satan and the demons knew all about healing the sick and casting out demons, and they were not happy with that at all. But then suddenly they hear about this speaking in tongues, and I think they were like... What does he mean, speaking in tongues? What's this? We'll come back to that. Acts 19, verses 1 to 6. So Jesus said to the people, Jesus said to his disciples, one of the things that will follow you, the believers, will be speaking in tongues. And this is an example later on of what happened to a group of people who they believed in God, they didn't fully, hadn't, hadn't fully worked out what they believed and they hadn't heard of the Holy Spirit. It sounds like quite a lot of Christians I know really. But anyway, 
Acts 19 verses 1 to 6. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, well, we've not heard of the Holy Spirit. Who's he? And he said to them, into what were you baptized? And so they said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So that's an example of what happened amongst the early Christians. There is nothing in the scriptures to suggest that these things died out with the first Christians. Amen. You know, these things will follow all those who believe, which is me and which is you. This gift, I know, is for all of us. Okay, I just want to share some of the things I've learned. I've been speaking in tongues since um, 1984. It took me a long time because I, I grew up in a, in a good, in a solid, Bible-believing church, but they didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. They didn't believe in speaking in tongues. And so it wasn't that they preached against it. We just never talked about it and when I was 18 I suddenly heard about the gift of speaking in tongues and I was intrigued what is this and of course nobody in the church wanted to talk about it and it was quite peculiar really um in the protestant world we pride ourselves in being bible believers whilst whilst having blind spots to large parts of the bible that we don't actually believe it's just a remarkable thing so anyway I became fascinated and interested in speaking in tongues and learned about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which transformed my life. The baptism of the Holy Spirit enables you to be the Christian you want to be. Okay? It's just amazing. It's fantastic. I mean, it's just, I could be a Christian in church. I could be a Christian if I was surrounded by strong Christians and Later on, when I left the church, it just seemed to drain out of me, okay? And pretty soon, I was just living pretty, pretty much like a, an undercover Christian, a secret Christian, like a spy in the world. Nobody knew who I was. And, uh, you know, it was, it was strange. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Everything changed. I found myself talking to people at work, talking to people about Jesus. And it was just amazing. But I couldn't speak in tongues. And to tell you the truth, I really had nobody to teach me anything about the gift. Um, and so I had to learn trial and error. There were one or two people in another church who spoke in tongues and they told me some of the things about it. They prayed with me and nothing happened. So I just, you know, I didn't have the gift. It took me 18 months of seeking the Lord. But I'm telling you, I, I pursued speaking in tongues for 18 months every day and one day I don't know whether God just had pity on me or I or I just uh, I just um you know hass hassled him so much he just said no enough's enough speaking tongues I just I don't know it was great I one day I just spoke in tongues and it was amazing now I took hold of the gift of tongues I started to pray in tongues. I mean, my, the joy of my life at that time was to come home from work, eat my dinner very quickly and go to my room and, and spend the time with the Lord, spend the evening with the Lord. I would, quickly I started to spend three hours an evening praying in tongues. And when, I, when you speak in tongues, your mind is praising God and praying at the same time. There was things happening around me. There were times where it was boring and I just spoke in tongues. And then there were times of uh, the presence of the Lord coming into the room. It was incredible. I didn't know what I was doing, but it was just absolutely fantastic. And I, I went to 
I went to the other church where people, you know, one or two spoke in tongues and I, and I told them about this and they were like, because then I said to them, you have the gift, do you use it? And one of them said, well, there was a time when I spoke in tongues for 15 minutes one day. And he said it was a really good day, but I've never, I've never really used it since. It just didn't make any sense to me. So I continued to pursue the gift of tongues. And I've got to tell you, I spent the next year after that, I actually was praying in tongues for around about five hours a day. And many other activities in my life fell off because you can't do, you can't work and, you know, go to the pub, go to football matches, um, do all kinds of other activities if you're praying in tongues for five hours a day. But my joy was to spend time in the presence of God. And I learned that your life is transformed when you begin to use this gift. Okay? Now I've got to tell you something. I'm a pastor today and all around me there are people with problems. Christians who struggle, Christians who have problems in, their, in themselves, problems in their family, problems with their children, problems at work, many, many issues and struggles and, and, and God has given us this gift of speaking in tongues for such a time as this in your life. Because praying in tongues is the most incredible thing. Listen, I see it like this. I think that when God revealed to the world this gift of praying in tongues, Satan was hopping mad. He was furious because God knew how difficult our lives would be. Because so much of the time we have to pray. You have to pray for your husband. You have to pray for your wife, your children. You have to pray for all the problems in your life, the situations at work, the situation in your town, in your country, in the world. It's difficult. It's hard work. You have to pray with the limitations of your brain, your knowledge, your awareness, your insights. And who, who amongst us know what's going to happen tomorrow? You know, we don't really know. You don't know what's coming. You don't know who you're going to meet in the, in the supermarket tomorrow. Okay? We're limited so much in our understanding and we pray with our understanding, which is good. But intercession, for me, I learned intercession was waiting on God, receiving direction from the Lord of how to pray, and then praying that back to him and he would answer. It's very powerful. It's very hard work doing that. And God knew how difficult our lives are going to be. So he gave us a secret weapon. Let's call it a secret weapon. It's a, and I, with the young people in church, I say it's a superpower. Speaking in tongues, which it is. Because God said, to, God said, I'm going to give them, my children, my followers, a prayer language. Where I, with my knowledge, okay, with what's happening tomorrow and next year, what's everything about you, your children, your husband, your lives, all the problems, everything. With my knowledge, I am going to give them words to say, to pray back to me. And then I will answer those prayers. Now, God has limited himself to work through us, okay? And he finds these ingenious ways of doing it. And one of the ways is speaking in tongues. It's the most incredible thing that God gives you a language, the words, to pray back to him. And then he hears those prayers and answers them. So you're praying for some stranger that you're going to bump into tomorrow on the street, that they are going to be open and receptive to the gospel and the trouble and the despair that they're facing in their life. You're going to have the words to just bump into them and speak directly into their life, okay? And when you do so, God has gone before you when you've used your gift of tongues and he's already prayed and prepared that person to be receptive to the gospel. It's just amazing. It's just incredible. You know, anyway, I'm going off my notes. So let me just get back to my notes. This is, I always do this, I get too excited go off my notes and then I've lost myself now let me tell you right speaking in tongues is 
such a powerful weapon of warfare to use in our lives. For some reason, and this is the thing, Satan was so angry about it, he decided to try and rob this because he's a thief. Yeah, Satan is a thief. We all agree about that. He's a thief. He's going to steal anything we let him steal. But we're not going to let him steal anything else in our lives. That needs to stop, okay? Because we're going to go forward in victory and we're going to push back the evil in our lives and we're going to dominate the darkness around us, okay? He, Satan tries to tell us a number of lies about this speaking in tongues. He tells us it died out with the early apostles. What's the answer to that? I've got one simple answer. I'm speaking in tongues, okay? I know a few of you speak in tongues. I can call upon you. Mary Beth, do you speak in tongues? What do you say to it? the fact that it's... Yes, yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. It's not died out. Here it is. Here it is today. Now, if that's not enough... There's nothing in the Bible, nothing in the Bible to say it's died out. And yet whole denominations, I don't know about the Catholic world, in my world, whole denominations don't believe it's for today. It's absolutely amazing. And they are Bible-believing Christians. So we pray for them, God bless them, and we speak in tongues, we're probably praying for them. Okay? The next thing that he tries to do is to persuade us, once we have the gift, or he says things like, it's not for everybody. So it's for Mary Beth, it's not for Kate, it's for Maria, it's not for Mike, it's for Vicky, it's not for Karen. And we buy into this. And so because we have no faith, we don't receive it because we receive everything through faith. I'm telling you now, all of you can speak in tongues. It's actually your decision. You know, it's going to be your decision if you become a Christian and put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's your decision to accept the Holy Spirit and be baptized. It's your decision to speak in tongues because God has made all of these things available to us. I'll tell you something else. It's our decision if we go to heaven or go to hell. Come on. Okay? It's not, it's not God's. God has given us the free will to choose. He's made available to us life. He's made available to us the gift of tongues. The next thing Satan does is that, and this is so effective, I can't believe it. But it's going to stop, okay? He tries to stop us using it, okay? Because speaking in tongues doesn't necessarily feed your emotions. And oh my goodness, how we love, how we love to get emotional highs from what we do. Speaking in tongues, man, is hard work, okay? I've got to tell you, one of the things in my life I have to do, it's like a medication, I wake up in the morning, I open my eyes, I speak in tongues 15 minutes. That's before I get out of bed. I've got to, I've got to tell you that. Earlier on in my life, I suffered with chronic depression, suicidal depression, PTSD, and post-traumatic stress disorder. But I don't suffer any of those things today. I don't do that. And the principal medication in my life is speaking in tongues. Okay, I've not had, in the last 20 years, I've not had any depression. I've not had any suicidal thoughts. I've not had any issues of any kinds of, of, of addiction issues or um, any attempt from traumatic thoughts to come into my head. I tell you the truth, I speak in tongues because I'm not tolerating those things. And those things haven't got a chance. They go, those things have left my life and I'm not having them back. I don't tolerate them anymore. I know how powerful those things are in our lives. Many of us struggle with very powerful things from the enemy because Satan is powerful. Jesus is more powerful. Hmm. And so are we because we carry the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and we're going to crush him under our feet. Yeah? Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. So we've got to stop being put off using it. It's time. Let me tell you right. I was praying tongues 15 minutes in the morning. Then I get out of bed. And then I have a strong cup of coffee because I love my coffee. I don't, I probably shouldn't drink my coffee, but I do. I love it. Strong cup of coffee. And then I go and I pray for tongues for an hour. And while I'm doing that, I'm praying in my mind as well. It's just something I need to do. And then I get on with my day. And during my day, 
And this is not easy, okay? But during my day, as I'm driving, as I'm walking, as I'm, if I do any jobs in the house, like, you know, I have certain jobs I'm given. Like I have to sometimes hoover the floor, the stairs, or um, put the dishes in the dishwasher. I'm praying in tongues, okay? Sometimes it drives my wife mad because I'm just chunnering away to myself quite happily doing what I'm doing. If I go for a walk, I pray in tongues. In the car is a great time to pray in tongues. I don't have time to watch TV. I just don't have time. I don't have time to read secular books. I, I do look at the sports on the, on the website. I look at my um, Manchester City football team. I check out what they're doing. That takes me about five minutes a day. But then I, I try not to get involved in the daily news too much because a lot of it is speculation and, you know, it draws us in. I get drawn in by the internet so easily. I love it. And I can easily spend an hour. I can spend an hour on the internet looking at this, that and the other. And then I can go and watch a film for two hours. No problem. It's easy. I'm really good at doing that. So what I have to try and work out is spending that time in a more productive way. Now, I say to people in church, if I tell you to go and watch a good film every day, it's going to take two hours. They can all do that. I can do that. I love watching films. I love it. We're good at doing that. But if I say, I want you all to go away and pray in tongues for two hours a day, and then go and read your Bible for an hour each day, people are like that. Oh, pastor, you know, we're going to pray for you. Or maybe get another pastor, you know, I don't know. Because he's crazy. And people will think, Alan, that's extreme. It's too extreme. What's wrong with you? You know? But if you don't believe me, and I and maybe some of you do this already, just give it a go. Try it. Praying tongues for three hours a day. Do you know something? You are gonna have to change some things in your life and drop some things out in order to do that. And your life is gonna change. I'm telling you now, your life will change when you begin to use the gift of speaking in tongues. How do we do, how do, we do that? It's an act of our will. It's a decision that we make. I am going to sit down and do it. If you're not using your tongue very much, doing it for five minutes is like an eternity. Okay? <laughs> it's like going to prison for a year. It's so awful. Five minutes. If you do five minutes for three days, it just starts to go easy, okay? Try it for 15 minutes a day. It's gonna probably annoy you. It's gonna irritate you because it's boring and nothing happens and you just shula salam bread, kiana masala, shula sala to kaduk. 15 minutes by the clock. Okay, I have to do it by the clock because otherwise it's, I think I've done it an hour and I've done it for eight minutes. So, <laughs> you know, you do it. You discipline yourself. We make a decision to do it. God is waiting for us to make a decision. And I tell you, the enemy is waiting for us to make a decision as well. And until we do so, he's, he's playing havoc with our families and our lives. You know, and the people that we should be witnessing to and leading to the Lord, you know, he's, he's, he's having a, a free hand in those people's lives. And it's time we took those people back. You know, there's too many hurting people in the world around us that need the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I know there is no other answer. I'm telling you, I, I've tried the other things. Jesus is the only way. Yeah. And where are, we, where are we up to now? So, tongues is an infallible prayer language. It's a language from God. Um, what are we doing for time? Oh my goodness, I better, I better move on quickly. There's so much that can be said on this subject. Part of what I want to do today is just to get you interested and get you stirred up and, you know, pursue this, study yourselves. I have come across a minister, an American minister through Mary Beth called Andrew Womack. He has some amazing teachings on the gift of speaking in tongues. Andrew Womack, okay? You can go online on YouTube and listen to some of his talks. I have been speaking in tongues 30 years. I've learned new things myself. One of the things that happens when we speak in tongues is that God begins to give us revelation. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I've been doing this for years. When I've been preaching, I've prayed in tongues for an hour before I go to church. And usually, the message I prepare changes. Often, I have a whole new message by the end of it. God gives me ideas, and it's absolutely incredible. And I never really understood what that was, but that is the interpretation of tongues, the beginning of receiving revelation of what it is that I'm talking to God about. As I'm talking to God, he's, he's giving me insights about what I'm talking about because I speak mysteries to God. And God begins to reveal to me what those mysteries are. And sometimes they are incredible things that unlock the problems in the people um, in church that they, they, they need to hear a message. Amen. And I've just, it's like, been a real breakthrough for me because I've suddenly realized that interpreting tongues is something we should be praying for, we should be asking God, and also it's an amazing thing. You will start to have revelation from the Lord himself, which is life-changing and is life-giving and is just amazing, okay? So I was praying in tongues the other day. I was walking down the street late at night because I like to go for a walk in the evening, praying in tongues. One of the people in church called Nicholas came into my mind, okay? And I thought, I'll give him a phone. I'll, I'll need to call him. And I thought, no, I'm not doing that because I'm praying. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to pray in tongues. So I'm carrying on. Next second, Nicholas phones me. And I'm like, I was just a fight. You were just on my mind. I was praying for you because I was praying in tongues. And then he came into my mind. So in my mind, I'm praying for Nicholas. You know what I mean? And it works together. Let me tell you one more secret testimony for myself. When you pray in tongues, you will start to read your Bible more. And the Bible will begin to open up to you. These things, for me, I know this is true. They work together. The more I pray in tongues, the more I pray in English. The more I pray in tongues, the more I read my Bible. The more I pray in tongues, the more I am inclined to the things of God. The more I pray in tongues, the more I worship the Lord. It all starts to work together. The more I pray in tongues, the more I witness to other people. The more I pray in tongues, the more my faith builds up, the more my unbelief dies down. So I'm more likely in a work situation or whatever to say to somebody, I'm sorry you don't feel well, but I'll tell you what, I'm a Christian. We pray for the sick. Would you like me to pray for you now? And many times people say, yeah, people are open to that. Because, I mean, the doctor can only do so much. People are still in pain. People still have problems. And we have an opportunity to pray for people all the time. We lack the faith, the belief. You know, if we've been watching TV for six hours a day and praying in tongues for six minutes a day, our faith is not going to be very strong. So let's reverse that. I have nothing against TV, nothing against those things, but let's just reverse the amount of time that we're spending in the Word of God and in the TV and praying in tongues, and we will see our lives transformed and the lives of those around us begin to change. I'm telling you, I've just lived this out. Right, that's enough. I've got to stop because I wanted to sh look at 1 Corinthians 14. Hey, Alan, Alan, can I interrupt you before you start 1 Corinthians? Yeah. I just want to read Romans 8.26. Um, in sure. the same way, the Spirit, too, comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches the hearts knows what is the intention of the spirit because it intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. This is tongues to me. The Holy Spirit praying to the Father through us, through our very own mouths that we surrender. And it is the absolute perfect prayer. I just wanted to add that scripture before you, you went on because it's... Um, Amen. One of my favorite scriptures on praying in tongues, we are allowing the spirit to pray for us because the spirit knows what we need. Just like Alan was saying, you're, this has been so awesome. I know I personally am encouraged to pray way more than I am in tongues because I'm not giving it any enough room. Um, go on. 
Praise God. That's so wonderful. That's so good. You know, this is really, I don't know where you guys are up to. I'm not sure. Um, when people join my church, some of them have been in other churches before, and many of them have never really heard a sermon on preach, of, of speaking in tongues. So you're never quite sure where, where things are up to with this gift and what people actually know. And sometimes the people who know the most don't actually use it. <laughs> so I want to just encourage you guys, check it out. This is, this is not an optional extra. Oh, I was just going to say it's not an option, Ellen. Go, go. It's not you know, an optional you extra. <laughs> you buy a car, okay? What's the choice? So we bought a new car, a new van years ago, okay? And we had a choice. It was amazing. You know, we've never done this before or since, but it was incredible. You get to choose what kind of wheels, what color the car is, etc. Fabric seats or leather seats. Who likes the fabric seats? Okay? That you don't get sweaty in the summer, they're warmer in the winter. Fabric, some people love fabric. Who likes leather? Leather seats. I like leather seats, okay? You know, they're not that comfortable a lot of the time. I just like them. All right. That's an optional extra. And many of us think that speaking in tongues is an optional extra. But God's not messing about. He knew how tough this life was going to be. He gave us this incredible gift for all of us because we needed it. He knew that we needed it. If you want to live in victory, you're going to take, have to take hold of all of the things of God. I'm telling you, this world is, the battle is too hard. It's too tough. Maybe if you are a perfect person, super rich, living on an island, go surfing every day, everything is easy, everything is beautiful. Um, maybe you can just um, switch off at this point. I, I don't know what to say to you because no one in my life is like that. I live in inner city Manchester in the UK and there's nobody like that in my life. We all have struggles. We all have problems. Amen. Amen. Okay. I know we need to begin with a total uh, reliance upon the authority of scripture above all opinion teaching revelation prophecy if somebody you know i had this minister he fasted and prayed for two weeks and came to me with this revelation that he'd got which totally countered scripture and it has to be discarded you know i don't know maybe you say to him listen mate go and have something to eat and and, and read your bible instead of you know getting crazy revelation from somewhere i don't know because if it disagrees with scripture it needs to be discarded so if somebody says this doesn't exist or this is true or that we measure it by the bible measure this talk by the word of god yourself and come to your own conclusions and take responsibility for your own walk with the lord because on judgment day each one of us will stand alone Amen. and give an account Amen. ourselves before him so what I wanted to do, because, you know, if we just have teaching and, and then, you know, we all go home, it's not, I don't think that's how it should be. We need to be theoretical and practical at the same Amen. time. So I've, I've, uh, sent, I've sent some notes to Mary Beth with some scriptures on there. Um, the script, the passage in, in 1 Corinthians 14 is mentioned in, in those notes. And... Perhaps if you want, um, if Mary Beth sends those notes, then you can read through those things and begin to do some studying and pursuing uh, of this subject yourself. If you need to learn more of the theory or the practical, um, I'll just mention a few, a couple of verses very quickly. Okay. Yeah. Verse two. For 1 Corinthians 14, verse two. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men. Mm. which is important because it's still really, it doesn't mean anything to anyone they speak to God no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries well they're mysteries to you and me but they're not mysteries to him and we are called to pray for the interpretation of those mysteries I mean I could really get into that but I don't want to do that today well, can, I, Verse, can I say something on that sure. when we're praying um, it's a spirit to spirit. You know, not everybody has time to spend three hours a day. I I have given my life to ministry. 
that is my work every day. I don't have little kids. I'm not, I don't have a job. That is my job. But for those who have a job, when you praying in tongues, it's such a gift because your mind doesn't have to be. You know, when Alan says my mind is engaged and my, but when you're speaking, we are spirit, soul, and body. We have a body. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions, but we're also spirit beings. And when we pray in tongues, it's spirit to spirit. And it's a mystery that we don't have to know because God's going to reveal it to us. It might not be at the moment, it, but he will reveal w himself to us. But while you're like Alan said, while you're doing the dishes, just be praying in tongues. While you're driving the car, be praying in tongues. You can still be looking at the road. You can still be doing what you have to do. But just to know you don't have to be present in your mind. You can be because it makes it so much better, like Alan says, but and I know for me, I'm going to do what Alan says and just put an alarm on my phone and just get started. I didn't mean to take you off, but. Mary Beth, if you're saying things like that, you can take me off anytime. That's all wonderful. It's really great. Fantastic. Can I ask a question? Sure. Can, can I ask a question, Alan? Okay, thank you. Um, so in First Corinthians 14, the first line, the first verse is pursue love but strive eagerly for the spiritual gifts above all that you may prophesy. Yeah. Okay, that's the leading sentence. Okay, then, for one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to human beings, but to God, for no one listens. He utters mysteries in spirit. On the other hand, one who prophesies, prophesies, this is the point here, and I don't, I'm not getting it. On the other hand, one who prophesies does speak to human beings for their building up encouragement and solace. Whoever speaks in a tongue builds himself up, but whoever prophecies. Right. So start building up yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he's talking about building up the church. Now I should like all of you to speak in tongues, but even more to prophecy. So he's putting that above the speaking in tongues. One who prophesies, this is the last sentence, one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless he interprets Amen. so that the church may be built up. What is prophecy? Prophecy is a revelatory gift where God, Margaret, God himself will speak a, a word to you to share with the church, either a picture a direct word. I've been used in this gift, okay? The Lord's given me dreams and interpretation of the dreams. He's given me direct words and I've gone to the church and I've given that word and it's it's for everybody, okay? Uh -huh. Now, that is so powerful. We need prophecy in the church. We need that. That, that doesn't happen in the Catholic Church, Alan. I'm just trying to explain that. Well, that it doesn't people, happen in most pe churches. Yeah, people, yeah, people don't, you know, in your church, you would have a stage, you would be teaching whatever, and people would be invited up to give a testimony or give a word for the church if they feel that the Holy Spirit's speaking to them. That doesn't actually happen in the Mass setup. Okay. So that's why Margaret wouldn't really understand what that means. Okay. In, very few churches. Very few yeah. churches it happens. Yeah. In. Go ahead. Uh, the, the Protestant churches also have, have a lot of prophecy. So, you know, sorry, Lorraine Eastman, were you saying something? Yes, there's uh, millions of charismatics in the Catholic Church that practice this gift. Also, yeah. I understand that prophecy is saying the word of God. It doesn't have to be something in in the future. So, really, when you're at mass or you're some uh, some service. They are really prophesying because they are saying the word of God, the priest, the pastor. Hey, Maybe you are prophesying now, Lorraine. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, the other thing I just wanted to mention is, you know, is Paul talking specifically about church, the, you know, the church, church, or is it like, your, you know, your church, your family, your community, the people that you live with, we are church from my, mm -hmm. my understanding so i think when we prophesy to each other as a community whether it's in a building of a church or like this that we are prophesying and i think um i think it happens all the time well like alan said when you hear something from the lord and speak it out you're prophesying 
The problem is we aren't listening. And what tongues does is gives us the opportunity to hear from God and listen. It opens up the door for all the other gifts and it opens up the door for prophecy. What Paul is saying in this scripture though, is he's saying in the middle of the, the service, quit. they were standing up over and over and over again and just speaking in tongues. And Paul said, if you don't get an interpretation, stop. Don't, he said he limited it to three. We've totally gotten rid of it, but Paul limited it to three times per service. If you're going to go in a service, he goes, I would rather you prophesy because then we can understand what you're saying. What Paul was trying to do is say, quit pray. Don't come together as a public group and pray in tongues. This is because we are not going to understand. That's you praying directly to God. In other words, they were praying in tongues so much that he had to limit them. We've gone the total opposite extreme. Go ahead, Alan. I'm going to give you a chance to answer too. You were speaking in tongues. I, I'm going to be bold. Okay, I'm going to be bold. And Go. you test these words yourself. But I think speaking in tongues is the most important spiritual gift. I believe it's the, it's the first gift the Lord wants to give us. It's the one that will enable and and open up the doorway for other spiritual gifts. Amen. It is, for some reason, the enemy has been so successful in putting a, a wet blanket on this gift, okay? Yeah. But we're just, it's time to pull the blanket off and throw it away. Let's throw the blanket away, okay? That's so good. Just go. <laughs> and jump in, jump in. Yeah, I mean, you can do five minutes a day, but why not just go crazy and just do an hour a day, okay? Come do on, hour... Ellen, we're babies. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. This is what this is. See, I'm very extreme. I'm a very go for it. We... No, we're loving it. I love it. And, um... You know, the first thing it says is to follow the way of love. All these gifts. First, you have to have love. You can't. I think Paul was saying you're showing off your your tongues to people. Don't show off. Do it with the, lo the love of God and the love for your neighbor. Thanks for Lorraine. So, good. Listen, prophecy would be a great um, subject to talk about as well, but I think we've got to get this speaking in tongues right. Speaking in tongues is going to activate your Bible study, okay? So Activate you know, prophecy. It'll activate prophecy. Amen. It does. Right activate signs and wonders. It'll activate yeah. everything we're not doing. <laughs> you wonder why we're not doing, why we're not experiencing it. Signs. I was told it edifies your spirit. It strengthens yeah. your spirit. So if it's gonna, if you're, if, if God's gonna strengthen your spirit, then with your spirit being strong, then what's in your spirit is gonna overflow out into the community and, and into your day-to-day -day life. And, the inspiration, the, or as I call, I call them prompts or nudges from the Holy Spirit. You'll be more in tune with that, I think. Mary, Mary Beth, yes. can I speak? Yeah, please. This is Karen. I just want to. I saw copa si no bata pa anas o hasabo no no basika to pa. I just apa ato. I just want to surrender to you, Lord, and I just thank you for the courage to speak up. But I just want to say, Pastor Allen, that you have brought, broken down a stronghold for me and that, you know, I received the gift of tongues and the baptism of the spirit many, many years ago. And um, I, I actually prayed at the time. I thought it was a la carte and I could choose my special gift. And I actually prayed for the gift of discernment of spirits. But instead, I did receive the gift of tongues. And you have encouraged me so much because I, I do not use it only um, when I don't know what to pray and I have something heavy on my heart and I just want to give it to the Lord. And then it is so, so powerful to me. But the stronghold that you just broke down for me, and I honor you for that, is that I got so hung up on that interpretation of tongues and that 1 Corinthians 14, 27, that says, if there is no interpreter present, the person should keep silent in the church and not speak to, uh, to himself 
and to God. And that was such a hang up for me because it, like when, when Mary Beth spoke in tongues and I speak in tongues, I would have never done that without interpreting it immediately okay. afterwards because I feel if I didn't, that was a violation of scripture. And I'm still, I'm still hung up on that. But what you told me is that I really don't know what I'm saying to my Lord and God, but that he will allow me okay. to interpret my own prayer by giving it back to me. When and you that, need it, when you need it, when okay. he wants to give it to you. Okay. Yeah. I, I still and interpretation use... is a different gift from somebody else. When he said that yes. he was counting on someone else to interpret it, not you personally. Okay. Yeah. Ellen. Remember that's a public gift of speaking in tongues. There's also the personal prayer language, which is mostly what Ellen's talking about. This is you and God alone. There's no one else around. This is just you and God praying in tongues. Um, this is the personal prayer language, not so much the public speaking in tongues. There's two different those are two different things. Yes. Albert, hold that thought. I'll be with you in one sec. Verse 13. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning about this at this time. It's really exciting for me that you know, we start to pray Ooh, for the interpretation. Good. I've used the gift of interpretation once in church. And... It was astonishing because this man stood up and, and spoke in tongues in church, not my church and the previous church. And uh, and it was, you know, as is often the case, slightly uncomfortable, slightly em embarrassing. And there's a silence and this man's blabbering away. And I'm, I was on the stage and and I'm thinking, I'm saying, oh, this should be an interpretation. Um, and I've never used that gift. So I said, Lord, what is what what's what's he saying? What's the message here? And then I just had a picture in my head of a table laden with food, big table. And everybody was, there was chairs for everybody to sit around the table and eat, but only some were coming. And there was an invite to everybody to come and eat. And I thought, I'm gonna take a chance and I'm gonna share that word. <laughs> so when he, when he finished, I asked for the microphone and I, and I said, I've got this, I think I've got the interpretation. And I shared what I was shared. And I shared the, what, my picture and this woman started crying in church and she started having this like incredible, you know, she got very excited because, um, and then she asked for the microphone and she started testifying of how much that meant to her and how significant it was that she'd been in another church and she'd been really hurt and injured and she'd visited this church and, and this was like such a powerful message for her. And I thought, wow, that's, that's incredible. But I never really developed it but I'm going to develop it. I'm going to just go for it, interpretation of tongues, and um, see where it leads me. Praise Albert, God. Albert what, you, what do you want to say? Where yes, more or less, to, uh, Mary Beth, I think, sp spoke in, in, in the same um, uh, idea I was going to um, uh, put forward. I mean, I, I think there is a, a, a distinction between praying and worshipping in tongues and prophesying in tongues. So that requires an interpretation when one is prophesying in tongues, but praying and worshiping in tongues. Uh, so when Paul was sort of, some people say he was criticizing the gift of tongues, he, wasn't, he was only saying, uh, um, referring to prophesying in tongues because he said it's useless unless there's someone else who can interpret the prophecy, you know. So I think there's a, a, a distinction between praying and worshiping in tongues and prophesying in tongues, which then would require someone who has the gift of interpreting those tongues, the prophecy. Okay, Albert. You know, could I just say one point? I think that we don't really understand the magnitude and the power of this particular gift. And I've got to tell you, I think we all have so much more to learn about this weapon of warfare. I'll tell you an example. I have a friend who was in ministry for 60 years. He's a very old man now, Peter Newman. He was on a train one day and he felt the Lord say to him, go and witness to that man over there. And he's like, oh, what is this not? And it's like the Lord nudged him, just go and witness. 
So he went over to the man who was standing up in between the carriages and he, he said to him, um, excuse me, listen, I'm, I'm a Christian and I, I just felt a, a sense to come over to introduce myself. My name's Peter and I just want to say that, I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you. The man, the man was blank because the, he made gestures. He couldn't speak English. He didn't understand a word he was saying. So my friend Peter just thought, oh, oh, oh I've got this one wrong. Turned to go and sit down and the Lord said to him, speak in tongues. Hallelujah. So he's like, so then he stood there and he, he spoke his tongue. I don't know what it was, you know, Shola Salah Patakatiana Masaha Shuka. Like, and the man looked at him with, with rapt attention. And then the man started crying. And then the man got on his knees and was like obviously praying to God. And you know, and then after after a while, the man stood up and was very happy and shook my friend's hand and then my friend stopped speaking and when I sat down he didn't have a clue what he said okay but obviously something impacted this man what's that I never heard a sermon on something like that but speaking in tongues is is um, an incredible thing oh, yeah. and it does make reference to all sorts of things it's a sign for unbelievers and etc but anyway it's really exciting it's an amazing gift <laughs> Let's all use it every day for the next 20 years. And then if it's not working out, we'll meet up again and we'll talk about it again. What do you think? How do you know when you have the gift? I mean, the key I... is faith. The key is faith. Because let me tell you, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Yeah? You know the passage? You who are evil, that's me and you, we are evil compared to God. You who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the key. It's faith. We, we, this is the problem we have. You see, we block it. We ask, we receive. If Kathleen, if you have asked for the gift of tongues, you have the gift. Okay. You, you know, and... You. Amen. Yes. And in the Catholic Church, we seal that with confirmation. This uh, Can I just read Acts two, chapter 2? Mm. If you want to read, it says, when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all, all in one place together. The entire church was there. All. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. And then there appeared to them tongues as a fire which parted and came to rest on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. And it happened to all of them, the entire body of Christ, the entire church was there in that room, and it happened to all of them. And every time when we go to confirmation, this is what's supposed to happen to us, but because we don't have Jesus, because we're not seeking the gifts, because we're not ready, mm -hmm. because we don't have Jesus as the center of our life, but I just want to reiterate what something Alan said when he got, received the gift of the Holy Spirit, when he re renewed his confirmation, let's say, and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, his whole life changed and my whole life changed. That day, Jesus became the center of my life and I revolved around Jesus. And I couldn't do that without the Holy Spirit. And so I'm saying for us right now, I think what Alan wants to do is lead you right now into tongues. And it's just open, going for it. It's just going for it. Yeah. Don't wait for it to come upon you. You have to be in it. It's like you, you have to turn to turn the car. It has to be going. And you can't just stay at the corner and turn the wheel. Or I, I don't know what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is just start driving. Start driving the car. Yeah. You have to speak. You have to use your, your you know, if you just sit there like this, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen, maybe occasionally, but it's it's not the way okay. because the Lord requires us to participate with him. Okay. You know, Thank you. so you, I'm going to pray. This is the key. You give your life. You make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. You give your life to Jesus. That's the first step because speaking in tongues is only for the children of God. And the only children of God... <clears throat> Are those who are in Christ Jesus, who have given themselves, made Jesus their Lord and Savior. So, if you've not done that, you ain't going to get the gift of tongues. Okay, let me just tell you that straight out. If you, we, we pray, I'm going to lead you in a quick prayer. If you want to pray, if you have never prayed this, if you prayed it, you don't need to pray it. 
But if you, if you haven't prayed this prayer, maybe if you want to, you can pray this prayer. If you need more time to consider, that's up to you. Then we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to baptize us. Mm. And then we're going to ask for the gift of tongues. And then we're going to speak in tongues. Okay? Go for One one thing. Uh, one little thing um, is that like everything with the Holy Spirit, one has to yield to him. I don't know whether you're hearing me because I'm yes. speaking from another Yes, place. we can hear you. That's but awesome. it's yielding. Just open your mouth and let it come forth because God will give you the gift. <laughs> Amen. Yield so, to it. Yield to it. Who wants to yield to it? Go ahead, Alan. You're leading. I'm... I want to I I yield. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Listen, guys, if you're not ready to pray this prayer, don't pray it. But if you're ready, if you just think, you know what, I want to love, I, I love Jesus. I'm going to serve him all my life. We're just going to, we're just going to commit ourselves to him, first of all. Dear Lord Jesus, we acknowledge that you are God. And we are in need of a savior. We, are, we have fallen short of the glory of God. We ask you to, ask you to forgive me for all my sin. And I ask you to come and live in my heart. And I am making you my Lord and Savior this day. Jesus. Amen. Amen.